Welcome back, everyone. After our exploration of the Deathclaw sewer lair in Concord last time, I am now back in the Red Rocket settlement. I've dumped all the gear and loot and junk into the workshop, and I'm merrily building away now. Look at how happy I am just chatting away at you guys while I build. Aww. My intention here is to build a concrete wall with a guard post, just the start of something. Then we'll do some more adventures. You can see in the sidebar menu all the things we're going to do in this video, and the timeline itself has chapter markers too, so you can jump around if you need to. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and now I'll turn it over to the guy in the lower right of the screen. Take it away. Okay. Now that is a sloppy bad wall. Oh, that's not that sloppy. Look at that, right up onto the edge. But it does cut into my settlement, and I want it to be over here. So let's pick this up. What is that doing? Is that all the way in? Yeah, that's all the way in. That's nice. Okay. Uh, another trick or tip, there's a reason why I always put two stairs. I got two sets of stairs there, and over here at the, the sim settlements here, I put down two sets of stairs here. Um, when I first started playing the game, I used to get so frustrated because NPCs were not moving and working the way that I wanted them to work. They wouldn't go to their jobs that I had assigned to them. Like Things were a mess. And it turns out that part of the reason is your settlers need half a tile's width in order to move. In other words, take one of these tiles, like this one right here. This tile, you need half this width open and clear for your settlers to move. Um, and so I would have things like, I'd have like junk like all over the square, leaving like, like a little tiny walkway through areas or whatever. And the path system, just the pathing would not work. The system could not find a, a way for the settler to get through. My character could get through. I would aim it at the location I wanted to go to. I would wind right through these little tiny paths and it worked for me. But for the computer, for some reason, it wouldn't path the NPCs through the area that I was building. And so I finally learned like, you need to keep your walkways wide open and you need to have redundancy. You need to have at least a couple places for them to, you know, if you have stairs, do two stairs. If you have a walkway, keep it at least half the width of a, of a tile and maybe have two walkways or two open areas or whatever. Um, and once I started to do that, all of the sudden the settlers started working. All right. Oh, I got my level up. I am going to get advanced lockpicking. Let's pull you back a little bit. I don't want people to be able to be underneath you and firing at you. You should be able to see everybody. Okay. I put you here. You can see right down the road. Pretty good. You can see everything. This is a good spot for a, for a station. Let's find Pumpkin. We're going to give you a job. Pumpkin is totally the wrong person for this job now that I think about it, though. I should not be assigning Pumpkin to be a guard. She's a very fragile girl. If you've seen her talking, she's kind of cute and quirky and silly, and she doesn't really have a violent bone in her body. However, I do have someone who does have a violent bone in her body. Hi, Seven. This girl would like to kill as many people as possible. Let's put her on guard duty. Tell me that's assigned. Yep. Good. All right, so food production. There you go. Food production should have just dropped down to six. Because seven is no longer farming, but then we can put pumpkin on to farming. Where'd she go? Alright, pumpkin. That 
should get food production back up to 12. Good. All right. Thank you for your service, Kim. Thank you for service, pumpkin. And now we have our first protective wall with seven on guard duty. This is not a very good wall to start, but what we'll do is we'll eventually expand out so that it runs right along the length of the street, I think. I might get rid of the coolant sign. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, I might build up on the roof, but everybody builds on the roof. Eh. I might have mentioned this, but one time when I was playing through, I managed to, like, get a tile down right here. I was like, um... Let's see here. I was like uh, in the wood floors. Yeah, like this, like this guy here. I managed to get it down, and I managed to get it almost. Yeah, like it's dropping a little bit. You can see it sort of pops up, drops down, and I managed to get it to drop down so it was almost flush. Oh my gosh, it's doing it again. All right, I just want to do it just because, just to see it. Now, normally I shouldn't be able to drop this here. It's not fully highlighted in blue. That's highlighted in blue, and you can drop it there. It can't work here right now because I've got that um, the power generator in the way. But I have place anywhere, and it's letting me. Let's get you out of the way. Okay, we'll go like that. That was kind of interesting, though. I almost did it again. Okay, it's not quite perfect, but... Um, anyway, I was doing a playthrough, and I got the... The board right up in line here like perfectly aligned and it was like somehow I got it like sunk into the ground just the tiniest bit like I found like a perfect place to nudge it or something so that it was kind of flush with the white curb and I was like well that's wild because now it looks like it's meant to be there and then I started snapping more boards onto it I snapped them all the way over here and then I put walls up and I had walled this whole lower area I might do that again that was pretty fun I'm going to leave that board there for a moment, just so it'll be a reminder to me. I might want to keep doing that. Maybe. Okay, let's go to sleep. Hey, Codsworth. Always fully eat and drink before you go to bed. So that your endurance is up. So that you are not weak when the game tries to calculate whether you should get sick overnight. It should almost be 7 a.m. Yeah, it's 6.49. All right. 19 units of water is probably too much for me to be carrying. That's a lot. That's weighing me down. That's okay. It's June. Okay. Can we trade a few things? I think it's getting to the time when I start equipping Hi, these people. Shine. Just another great day to be alive. Oh, Kim's kind of a sweetheart, isn't she? Assuming that wasn't sarcastic. That's actually kind of nice then. Kim and Pumpkin are going to farm together and they're both kind of sweet. I get night terror sometimes. People kind of dismiss it when I tell them, but it's really scary. Okay. Uh, things are starting to happen. Clear this place out. Let's once again head toward Corvega. But I really probably shouldn't head toward Corvega. In fact, maybe I'll veer off. Maybe I want to go to Drumlin Diner. The reason I want to go to Drumlin instead of Corvega is I really feel like I want my power armor back. I'm a wimpy uh, science dude build. And I am not intended to be amazing in a shootout. 
I only want to shoot at range with lots of cover and be completely protected. But this might be good. Carla's here too. And a hunter. Hi. Well, what's happening? You looking to buy? Yeah. Let's see what you got. All right. This is another NPC from the um, NPC's travel mod. Just yet another wandering dude. He won't always be here. He'll be off somewhere else. Um, there's a few hunters that you can find in the game. Um, they all have that sort of silly greeting like, hey, what's, what's happening? Um, but he does have some good meat, but I don't want any of it. Hey, Carla. You again. Here to trade? Let's see what you got. You break it, you buy it. <gasps> she does have a core. I might want to do charisma stuff. What about here? I can rest easy knowing that Wolfgang is rotten in hell. Thank you. Do you need anything? Let's see what you have. <laughs> it's all worth every cap I'm charging. Do you have a fusion core? No, but you do have 33308. Oh my gosh. If I get 308 and the core, I'll be penniless, but I will have two cores plus an extra little used up core. I could be in power armor as I'm running around doing stuff. Okay. I have an idea. Let's do this. I am going to run back up to Sanctuary. I am going to get chems going. I am going to make great mentats. I'm going to get my first attempt at a charisma outfit. And then I'm going to run back here and make a deal with Trash Can Carla. And for you guys watching, hopefully all that happens is it goes fades to black for a second and then comes back out and fading to black. And we're back here with everything done. So you don't have to watch me be boring. Okay, so... Um, I, uh, I said we would fade to black, we'd be back at the diner really quickly, but I'm fading to black into Sanctuary because I put together my Charisma outfit. I just wanted to show it to you guys, so here's what the look I've got for my dude now when he's doing Charisma stuff. Um, so he's a bit of a, uh, a cowboy businessman, I guess. Uh, that is uh, the clean black suit, which gives him a Charisma of two, along with... Uh, I think those are sunglasses, might be a mistake. I, no, those are black rim glasses that are not a mistake. They give you a charisma of one. And then the militia hat gives you a charisma of one. So I normally have a charisma of six. With the outfit on, I've got a charisma of ten. Uh, and now I'm going to quickly make some chems to get great mentats or other stuff. Then I'll have some more charisma boosts. And then I'm going to go buy the living daylights out of everything. See if I can get some extra power or armor cores and stuff like that. Okay. So we'll do another fade to black and hopefully we'll be back at the diner. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, so, for you guys watching, we've got a rad scorpion. Uh, right as I'm trying to make purchases. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I want to fight. It's walking away. Maybe I'm going to leave it alone. I just, I don't want to even mess with it. Can I do my purchases? Will Trash King Carla not fight it? Uh, please don't fight it, Trash King Carla. This is dangerous. Am I really doing this? I only have to be in the game world for a second. Most of it will be paused in menus. Okay, we're going to try and survive for this. I'm going to optimize the hell out of this. Hopefully this works. Oh, I don't even have my gear with me right now because it's on the stupid box. Okay. Uh, let's get, a, get ahead of Trash Can Karma for a second. Get my box to come to me. Trade. Give me everything. Okay. And then put on what I'm supposed to put on. Charisma glasses. Not the casual outfit, that's only one. Clean black suit. And the helmet, the militia hat. Okay, so I've got, th I've got three items on that should be boosting my charisma up to 10. Let's check. Good, then I take grape mentats. And Drink the Gwinnett Stout, which would also give me a Christmas boost. 
My Christmas should be like 16 now, I think, maybe. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I think that that maxes it out. Even though I'm very low level, I don't think that I can get any better, even at the highest end of the game. I could be level 200, I don't think I can do better than this in terms of uh, buying power. I believe when I talk to Trash Can Carla, she will sell everything for the lowest rate possible, and she'll buy everything for the highest rate possible. We'll know that it's working if she's selling her fusion core to me for 240 caps. That's the lowest I believe it will go. And she'll buy fusion cores from me for 160 caps. That's the highest that buying will go. Great. My little quick trade mod just came to my rescue. I didn't have to talk to her at all. Just quickly pulled up the menu to do stuff. Okay. Fusion Core is 240. That's good. We'll buy it. And then if I sell her my bad Fusion Cores, I should get 160. 160. And, um, you know, there's a silly thing that happened uh, with the Fusion Cores in one of the first games that I ever played. I sold Trash Can Carla my bad Fusion Core, and I was really, I was really happy about it. I was like, great, I got some money for my Fusion Cores. And I didn't min-max or anything at that point. I had no idea how to sell for a really good value or anything. But I sold and I got a little bit of money and I was happy with it. Um, and then I came back to her just like an hour later. Like I didn't even wait very long. I think I, I went into Drumlin Diner and I talked to someone in Drumlin Diner. And then uh, and then came back out. Trash King Carly was still there. And I just pulled up her menu again because I thought I might want to just make sure I, I got everything that I wanted to get. And I saw that she was selling Fusion Cores. And I was like, that's awesome. So I bought the fusion cores and they were the ones I had sold her. They were completely depleted. They had like one or 2% left. And so I sold them to her, then bought them back. So I sold them for a terrible price, bought them back for a hugely uh, like marked up price. I just lost so much money. It was so stupid. Um, <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Um, I would like to take all of her 308 if I can. All right. Um, Boy, I'm giving her money. All right, so let's 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 seal the deal for at least this stuff here. That's pretty good. The fusion cores and the shotgun shells—they're looking great. Uh, and now I have a good fusion core, and she has the bad fusion cores, and I have all the good bullets. Aha! Oh, I'm just gonna get blown up with radiation. Hello. Oh. I can rest easy knowing that Wolfgang is rotten in hell. Thank you. Do you need anything? All right. We're back on it. I've already taken too much from her. And she doesn't have the money to cover it. But I'll buy her 308. There we go. Now I'm taking a little bit from her, but she's still got money. So I can keep selling. Let's see here. The red stack hideout. The raider. I never keep raider armor. If I can get rid of raider armor, I always will. Um... I don't know if you guys know that if you've if you played the older games, they did something better than Fallout 4 does, which is in the older games, you used to be able to put on um oh, I only have four caps left of breathing room, so I guess we're gonna stop there. Unless she might maybe she has junk I wanna buy. I should have bought junk from Trash Can Carla too. Shoot. Um oh, I want cement. Um, but anyway, in the older games, uh, you could put on the outfit of, uh, some other group, like a faction and you could fit in, you could blend in the, the game was programmed well enough to the point where if you were wearing certain outfits, they might think you were one of them. They would let you pass. Um, this version of the game fallout four, it does have that to some degree. There are some limited places where disguise is cool. And there are some limited places where people will comment on your outfits, but for the most part, they they don't. Um, and there, I don't I don't know a lot of places where you know like putting on raider gear will let you pass as a raider. I don't know how that 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 doesn't seem to happen very much. I've tried it a few times. Maybe it happens more than I think, but I just don't see that in the game very much. So I really don't ever bother to put on raider gear. Well, um, uh, even though I even though that's kind of a thing with older games where like the gear you wear matters. And in this game, it doesn't seem to really matter that much, uh, at least in terms of like what factions recognize you, what factions will accost you or let you go. Um, 
I nonetheless still get rid of the raider gear because my thought is I don't want to pass as a raider at any point. I don't want to wear that armor at any point. Um, even if the game really doesn't care and I could put, wear it without problem, I care. And I remember being, in the older games, I cared. So, so I try to get rid of it if I can. Okay. We sold what we could. We bought what we could. There's nothing else to buy from uh, Trudy. Should I try to trace, chase down Trash Can Carla now? I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk to this hunter, see what he can buy. 135 caps. Took as much money as I could from you, too. All right. Done. Please, no scorpion. Oh, no! There is a scorpion. I'm going to hope you're the only one and that you don't care about me. And let's take our rad blah blah. All right. Very hopeful that Rad Scorpion leaves us alone. There she is. Where's my gear? Where's my box? Right here? Why are you doing hiding off to the side? Oh, I don't want any of that. Yeah, I do. I want the Molotov cocktail. I'm going to sell that. Okay, all you have is junk, and I want to keep the junk. Okay. Carla, Carla. Huh? Good. All right. I might be able to do a little bit more with you. You know, I'm, uh... I'm making these videos in part for my dad, and every now and then you guys have probably heard me say, hey, dad, and I, you know, talk to my dad a little bit, and, uh, I do that, um, partly because I wanted him to see, to see if he was interested in the game. He and I used to game together a lot, and one of the games we used to play was, uh, was Diablo. And, dad, I don't know if you're still watching these videos, we're now quite a ways into this, but this music sometimes reminds me of Diablo when the little guitar is playing. It sounds like when you're in Diablo 1 and you come to see, like, I can't remember the name of those guys. Um, used to be all the guys in town, the little like town with the church and everything. If you remember Diablo one, um, this also sometimes sounds like a little bit of like um, Planescape Torment. I think um, there's a little bit of that kind of music to this ambient music that plays in the background too. So the guitar is a little bit of Diablo. The rest of the music is a little bit of like Planescape Torment and like going to all the weird worlds that Planescape Torment offered. All the weird wards, I guess they called them, of the city of Sigil? Sigil, I think is what that was. Um, anyway, it's just kind of interesting to hear this music and have it harken back to old games that I used to play. I don't know if that's on purpose. I don't know if the people behind the music did that on purpose or or what. Maybe it's the same person. I should look it up. Is it the same person who did this? That's it. All right. Not bad. Okay. The rad storm is gone. Awesome. Um. All right, everybody. Uh, so here's what here's what we got. Um. I have now bought and sold like the world's greatest buyer and seller. I got rid of tons of junk that I didn't want. I exhausted the caps of every merchant. They've all given me all their money. <laughs> I walked away with a bunch of fusion cores. Well, one fusion core plus I had two already existing fusion cores. So I now have a bunch of fusion cores I can use to power my, my armor again. Which I'm going to take with me down to um, Corvega. Uh, but... Before we go to Corvega, there's one last thing to do, and that is we have a gigantic list of advanced locks, and I took the lock picking perk so that I could finally wipe those things out and get them off the to do list. Everyone, thanks for watching. I'll do the lock picking off camera, and the next video will pick up with me slightly richer and ready to go. Remember to like and subscribe this video.
Also, keep your eyes peeled for my Starfield playthrough, which will launch just a few days after this video. Thanks again, guys. Bye.